Welcome. Thank you for joining us on the empty side of the table. Today we attended a toy convention in our city at a local high school. The one we went to for maybe a year or two before extreme trauma happened. The convention itself, uh, this was my second time there. I think this was a, the third one. The first one was actually quite nice. Um, reasonably large. And this time they had two separate rooms, which was cool. And what I've noticed about these uh, smaller local conventions as compared to, you know, the really big super conventions is you've got just a lot of private sellers selling their own collections, usually because, you know, they might have a spouse that doesn't agree with their passions or they need to make money or room because of a new addition to their family or what have you. So essentially they're wanting to, uh, they're wanting to get rid of the stuff and they're more, uh, more savvy towards uh, haggling or lowering their prices or whatever. Whereas if you've got, you know, people that have stores or whatever, they're very stringent and they charge way too much, um, usually above retail, things like that. Then you've got the resellers that, uh, you know, will get only a chase figures and sell them for three times as much. But that normally doesn't happen at these places. So today we found this lovely gentleman here from the original GoBot series. I believe his name is Royal T. Um, him and this other one called Pathfinder were probably my two favorite uh, GoBots. And I did like the GoBots because uh, the first uh, series, first couple of series actually had some metal bits in them. The gentleman that um, was selling this was really charging too much for it, but I was able to get him down to half price, which was still a little pricey, but I like this guy a lot. And I didn't notice till I got home that he's missing a bit, but that's quite all right. And I'll point that out as soon as I get him converted. Oh, I see. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you know, when you're a little kid and you're trying to be funny, I always had this bit sticking out in the front. <laughs> okay, enough of that. But yeah, the piece that we noticed was missing is uh, one of the rear fins. Like right here. I don't even know if it's called a fin. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it but I did like this guy a lot and we picked up this Dr. Fate figure from the Justice League Unlimited series I'm a huge fan of Dr. Fate these uh, these figures um, are kind of rubbish they're not at all posable they're about as posable as the first generation Star Wars figures from Kenner which I also thought were rubbish but it's Dr. Fate, so I had to get him. But the crown jewel is this beautiful gentleman here. Not someone I've uh, seen at retail ever. And it's uh, obviously a multiverse joker. But look at that gorgeous face. That's beautiful. This is from the Joker DC vs. Vampires. And that's not... Uh, a series event that I'm familiar with and there's no uh, real explanation about it on the back but there's this beautiful profile of uh, this particular Joker looks quite wicked so let's open him up and take a look another thing that does uh, kind of get me miffed though is there were some people selling figures only as sets because they came with the builder figure pieces and 
there were people selling only the builder figure for I think the lowest price I saw was fifty-five dollars, and I thought that was a bit uh, a bit much. And their whole logic is, oh well, if you buy all the figures individually, you're gonna pay almost twice as much. Yeah, but you'll also have five other figures in the builder figure. So he comes with this really cool designed mallet. And the last time uh, I saw a mallet like this was for the ancient, now ancient DC superpower figures. And they had a, a, a silly mechanism where you squeeze the legs and the arms would swing. So in this case, you would swing the mallet. And because of uh, the molding, the staff or whatever you want to call it, the hilt handle is a wee bit wonky. Of course you could put it in warm water to reshape it, but the minute you put it back in the package it'll probably take that bent shape. But let's look at this figure here. I am recording, right? Yeah, okay. So the shoulders swing out nicely, go up and down, he's got the swivel arm right beneath the shoulder joint, elbows are double jointed, Let's see here, and there's, yeah look at that, there's some nice play in these, I'm obviously not uh, too afraid to bend them, they bend quite nicely, head, Head isn't, uh, it's on a, um, it's on a swivel that goes behind, like, up near the base of the skull, doesn't turn at the shoulders. Some nice play in it, though. Legs. They can swing out a bit, um, the tails here kind of inhibit it but Joker's not that dynamic of a dude in the comics anyway. Legs, let's see. Okay, it's got a nice twist in there, I wonder how that works. Double jointed knees. Oh, also some nice play in those, cool. The ankles, a bit hindered by the cuffs and the pants. Um, you could turn them to side to side, it looks like. The toes got a, a nice point to them. Now let's look at these wrists here. Okay, so, uh, as previously mentioned with other things, we had a wrist snap off of a figure that uh, we were never able to find again. I think it was a Dr. Fate Black Adam figure. So I'm a bit, um, getting a closer look here. Sorry for being off camera. I'm a bit gun shy about, uh, some of these. There we go. So I was able to get him to do that. So let's, uh, see how well he can hold up that mallet. I've got a pose in mind. Oh, and the waist, sorry. We've got some play in the waist, a uh, little hindered by the tails. Did I forget anything else? Legs swing out to a split. Um, no swivel in the thigh. Oh, we already did the double jointed knees. How high can kick? That's high enough. See, the, uh, the clothes are a bit rubbery, so you do get some play. Alright, so now let's get to the mallet. I've already started uh, gathering a few supplies for our trip to Comic Con and uh, playing around with ideas as far as what we're going to consume. I think last year we made chia seed pudding 
and I'm almost considering making uh, overnight oats for this trip. Just putting together six or seven jars and uh, keep keeping them in the cooler than the fridge at the hotel. Let's see here, yeah, come on. There we are. Turn the waste a bit, maybe. Nice. Okay, look at that. Beautiful. Double. I apologize. Let's try that again. I suppose the mat, the mallet, excuse me, makes them a bit uh, counterbalanced. So if we choke up on the, there we go. It doesn't look as dynamic though like that. We spread the legs out a bit. There we are. Beautiful. If we could turn the wrist, maybe? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Maybe do something a little different with the arm. Let's see. There we go. Though, kind of looks like it should be holding something like a heart, something like that. Beautiful. Really cool. So I'm not gonna draw on about how excited I am for Comic-Con, but I will say, um, again, my hugest, most sincere gratitude to Mel Smith at 10 Ton Press. If you can remember that name, look it up. He does uh, primarily rock and roll <clears throat> autobiographies or uh, metal autobiographies of various bands like Tool. I think he does Slayer, um, Primus. He also uh, does uh, this um, little oddity comic based on uh, some local celebrities, puppets from the 70s called Charlie and Humphrey. Silly stuff. But please, if uh, you're at all interested in that kind of stuff, check him out. Mel Smith at 10 Ton Press. So this has been uh, kind of a review of the toy show I went to, me um, drooling over my upcoming experience at Comic-Con, and a nice little unboxing of the Joker from DC vs. Vampires McFarlane Gold Label from the DC Multiverse series. Really cool. Okay. So thank you for joining us. Stay healthy. Always be kind. Take care of yourself.